Welcome back to Nielsen Guitars. We are here, it's a rainy day at uh, Nielsen Guitars, so that can only mean only one thing. It's guitar time. So, what am I going to do today? I have received my Tone Tech uh, Waterborne Gloss Lacquer. So, I'm going to give this a go. I realised that I've got a water-based stain on the neck and the body. I have Waterborne Lacquer. So, this my panicked. And I wondered whether, you know, the first time I smear this lacquer across the uh, the wood, all the stain is just going to shift. So we are testing today. We are testing to see what happens when we apply um, the stain, uh, the, the lacquer over the top of the stain. Because um, I mean, I've never used it before, so I don't know what it's going to be like in terms of handling and cleaning. And it's handy to do that now rather than, you know, having to worry about the, uh, yeah, it being the finished article when you do. So I've got the test block from um, Wood Conditioner. So the very delicious. I've taken the masking tape off. Um, and that left quite a lot of gunk on there, which isn't good. But um, anyway, what I want to see is what it does to the stain, whether it's going to swell the stain or something. And I've got also this test block that I did the um, when I was looking for the looking for the red and discovering that I needed to use a new uh, bit of rag rather than reusing it. So I'm going to just try sweeping some stain on there. I will give it a go with this this brush, one of the you know one of the thinner brushes. I'll try smearing across that way um, and across half of this. And then I've also just got a paintbrush as well, just a cheapo Wilco paintbrush, just to see what it does and whether there's, there's any improvement in using one or the other. Because I've also read that I think if you go across it too many times you'll end up with it doing something so good to do that now fiddle around um, there's always another side of these this wood that I could try and use so there's various ways that I can um, you know try and improve the improve the knowledge um, before I actually start so yeah I just want to see what happens if I kind of apply it to a section probably I mean the, probably the best place to start is to apply it to this bit which is the 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 conditioner that I actually used, and okay, it's not the, the final stain colour, but it's going to, you know, stain on top of that conditioner. I just want to see whether it suddenly picks it up and, you know, tries to wander off with it, um, or whether it's just going to apply. Because I mean, these have been these have been drying for this has certainly been drying for what a week or more. I think it was last weekend I did this. So yeah, it's been applying for a long time, stay, um, drying on there for a long time. So whether it shifts about, whether I need to leave it. So yeah, and these will give a more uh, sort of truthful representation of whether. Um, how, how the colour will change is, is interesting as well, whether the colour changes and how it changes when you put this lacquer over the top of it. But also these haven't been drying for quite as long. So we'll hopefully learn something from this. And if we can avoid some sort of horrific um, incident, then that's all good. Um, so what have we got? We've got, yes, this waterborne lacquer from Tone Tech Luthier Supplies. Um, and we've got fresh gloves. Why not? Fresh gloves. Go decadent all out today. And a cup of tea as well, because that's important too. Um, so... All I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this uh, lacquer. I'm going to put it in a little um, little plastic pot. I'm just going to stick it in just to separate it out from the rest. And rather than dipping a paintbrush um, or something into the uh, into the lacquer itself, decant it into into this little pot. And then you know if it goes wrong and gets dirty, then it gets dirty in here. Um, so let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. So how do I open this guy? Okay, there we go. I've never seen this stuff before, so of course I'm, I'm desperate to give it a sniff and find out what it smells like. Um, it doesn't smell too, it's not too solventy. Um, smells a bit, a bit interesting. But uh, okay, so I've popped a bit in there. Um, so we'll close that back up again. And I'm gonna try the foam brush first, just because that happens to be the first thing I picked up. Um, so yeah, let's give it a go. So it's this, this side that we're most interested in. So we'll try and keep you in the, in the movie as best we can. It's fairly runny. It's not, um, yeah, it's fairly runny. So let's just, I'm not gonna put too much on the brush. Got a little bit on there in the edge of the screen, so let's try applying it and see what happens. Yeah, so that's definitely moving the stain. Um, the stain is coming off with the... Yeah, that's shifting about. Can you see that? That's all sort of... Yeah, that's completely lifted off the wood. So I think I'm going to need to do something different here. I don't think I can... I don't think I can work with that. Um, Good. Well, at least we did it now. If we're going to discover this, um, and you can see it's smearing the brown. So it's lifted the brown off the wood um, and into the uh, the lacquer, which is not ideal. So I'm, I guess if I go sweeping across here, oh yeah, it's completely stolen the lacquer from there. Now is that because I ran across it too many times? So let's try just one sweep on this side. Maybe I need to do more reading. But yeah, you can see there that it's it's brown in the lacquer. So that's not going to be good. Um, so let's just try one sweep across. Yeah, it's it's lifting it up even when it's just across there. So I wonder whether it needs to be sprayed 
rather than smeared. Um, well, let's try the paintbrush actually. Let's give the paintbrush a go. So I mean, we're going to get weird colours because of the um, because of the fact that there's brown in it. But let's try the paintbrush in it and see whether that's any different on the, the bottom of this one. So we've got a little bit on that paintbrush. So what's that done? That has dribbled down the side. Um, see, it's pulled on one side. I don't know whether I want to move it. It's got bubbles and pulled. Maybe, maybe that's okay if I'm gentle. I mean, this, this wood wasn't conditioned, so maybe it's the conditioner that's gonna cause problems. I suppose let's go paint across a bit with a conditioned piece and we'll see where we end up. So let's go across these guys. Yeah, so that's smearing. Um, okay, well, interesting. The conditioner is the problem, I think. The conditioner is clearly, yeah, so then if you go across it again, you, you smear right through it and you lift it off. So I think if I sort of dab there, I'll end up lifting the stain. Okay, well, that's definitely not ready as a technique for going on a guitar. Good, I mean, that worked here. That didn't do too badly there. You can see that held together reasonably well. Um, so yeah, what do we do? What do we do? I might fire off an email to Tone Tech and see what they recommend, given that they've got it. You know, I bought the, the stain from them um, and we'll see what, yeah, what they recommend. And actually, let's try, let's try just doing, can you see this one? If I shift that one along a bit, I'm just going to try it on here. Cause I mean, if there's no conditioner on this bit, then we might see a different effect, in which case we've got to counter the wood conditioner. Um, yeah, so that isn't lifting anywhere near as much. Okay, so maybe it needs to be sprayed on, um, in which case I don't have spray equipment. And I'm certainly able to kind of attack that more. You know, I assume I wouldn't be allowed to do that um, if I was doing it properly. I can see it's getting brown over here, but it's not, it's not lifting off the same way that if I run across this one again, it's just gonna all lift. Um, okay, well, there we go. So what do we do? What do we do? The conditioner is the problem. Um, yeah, I don't know whether I, yeah, maybe I didn't need to condition the wood. I'm not sure, because that's actually not too bad, but that's quite a different color from, you know, the one that I ended up with. Uh, good, okay, well, it'd be interesting to see how it, um, how it dries as well. And the other question I had, um, as I was looking, I was thinking about what I need to do next. So the decal, applying the decal to the headstock, where the headstock is now wet sanded um, to 2000 grit. Um, it's got the the kind of, um, what would you describe it as? A kind of satin finish. So it's not glossy anymore. The paint was glossy. So I'm trying to work out whether I can just apply the decal to the 2000 grit finish or whether I need to put it onto a layer or two of lacquer. And it seemed like everyone recommends putting it onto a layer or two of lacquer. Um, so yeah, I think there's, yeah, I think I'm gonna to need to be able to lacquer the headstock, um, which I guess uh, my assumption would be that this would probably go nicely over the headstock and wouldn't move it around because that was solvent based. Um, and also wasn't conditioned. Whereas this is gonna be, this is gonna end up a mess. I think if I do this, I will end up with more stain in the, um, in the lacquer and on the paintbrush than I will on the wood by the end of that. Um, so I guess, yeah, you need a way. I mean, the, other, the other thing is if it, goes on with, um, if the lacquer goes on with spray, does it clump, does it drip, does it move? I mean, maybe you're spraying it so thin that you, it doesn't matter, you won't really, you know, you won't build up those clumps and it won't, because if it, yeah, if, if you get a run down the neck, say, is it gonna drag all the stain with it? Um, I guess that's one for how, how much you um, apply it once in any coat. So, well, there we go. That, this might be a, uh, a short episode. Um, I may come back with more, but yeah, it's, it's lifted almost all of that stain off. But I was, you know, attacking it again and again. Maybe if I'd have just gone sweep and trusted it and left it, it would have been fine. But this is good to know. This is good to know because it's not the guitar, it's pieces of wood, and I can always um, simulate other situations using these bits of wood, these relatively cheap bits of bass wood. Um, I've still got more of the conditioner. I can put more stain on it, um, and we can see what we end up with. So. Yeah, in that case, I will, um, I'll leave it for now. Um, this has been uh, 
worrying but successful because it wasn't on the guitar <laughs> and um yeah i'll catch you guys soon i'm back um i how's that for customer service so i just phoned the number on the top of the uh, tone tech luthia page got through to someone who i uh, said you know can you help me out with the waterborne lacquer and he said i'll put you through to somebody else who knows more um i spoke to this person thank you very much if you are watching um i won't use names because i don't know whether people like their names being used on the internet but uh, i spoke to the person who said that definitely shouldn't overbrush so um, this this end here where I've kind of gone definitely don't do that big no no um, so I think what I need to do is um, yeah so he said lay it on very th uh, you know lay it on very thick very gentle float a layer over the top it'll self level don't agitate it do it once move on do it once move on if you miss bits you can come back to them later don't kind of you know so we just got to kind of go sweep 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 and don't overlap um, yeah, and it'll self-level. Um, I don't know whether I can see it doing, but it's it's kind of sinking in. Um, so, yeah, that's good. I think what I need to do, though, is um, get a new test block, which I have conditioned using the same conditioner, um, put at least one or two maybe layer layers of stain over the top, um, and try just practice, really just practice going as kind of gently as I can without you know getting to a point where I, I'm not overlapping I'm not smudging um, and then once you know once the stain is locked in with the first couple of layers he said you can then be more aggressive with it you'll then be able to paint and fill gaps and things so it makes perfect sense um, I think I I mean you can see I don't know you can see yeah you can see there where the where the masking tape was the brown has moved because I made a point of only smearing that way um, you can see it move the stain so the stain will move um, but I think yeah, you can you can see in some places where I've swept across it once, not much has happened. Where I've gone across it more than once, it's in the stain. Um, you know, the lacquer is in the stain, and it's moved it. So touch it once, do not touch it again. Even if it's uneven, um, you'll get back to it. Leave it to dry. Go again once only. So yeah, I I still don't feel confident enough to do this with a um, with the guitar, with the neck, with the body. I don't really want to. I know I said, you know, it's like an 80 pound kit, or 100 pound kit, but I do not want to mess it up if I can avoid it. So what I think I'll do is, um, yeah, recreate the situation either on the side of this block or on the back of it. Um, I'm concerned that sticker is going to cause a problem, but I guess I could clean it up first. So yeah, recreate that situation on a piece of basswood um, and practice the techniques that I'm going to require to to do this. I'm going to stick with the brush rather than the foam um, than the foam the foam pad i i don't know these these feel quite they feel quite kind of solid uh and i i just concerned i feel better using a brush i mean i've used a brush more in my life for painting and stuff so i feel like yeah i'd rather use a, a, a proper brush um so yeah it, they've cleaned up really nicely as well so actually just cleaning them up with water really easy it doesn't look like it's left anything on it and that's the good thing about using this waterborne stuff is it's very easy to clean up there's barely any smell i don't think i don't feel like i need to have all the windows open and fans blowing to use it um but yeah i've got to get the hang of this otherwise i am going to wreck the finish and now i finally got the color i well i've got a color i really really like I do not want to end up having to chase it around the guitar um, because I have got it all in the brush and the gloss um, lacquer. So, yeah, I think I'll get set up. I don't think, yeah, I don't think you guys need to see um, that. Hopefully you, you agree with me that you don't need to see me condition the wood, apply some stain um, to do that sort of thing. I think it's better. You know, I'll just get that done, um, get that done quickly. Um, yeah, I think... Yeah, they, they said the recommendation, if you you know if you can't do that, then use it in a spray. So the other alternative, if I cannot get it to work, is to use it in a, a spray, so just a gravity feed spray. But I have no spray equipment, so it would mean shelling out on a compressor um, and a gun and whatever else you need. It's just a whole other series of things compared to a paintbrush and that. I'd rather use the paintbrush, but I need to learn how to do it properly. But yeah, certainly looking at some of this, you know, this, this bit down here, where I've gone over it by the look of it once, um, you can see it's got a shine, it's got a sheen, it's got a sheen to it, and it has not smeared except where I have been too aggressive with it. I think some of the edges, this, the, this edge looks good, this edge is carried a bit. Now whether that's, you know, whether you wouldn't notice that on a guitar, I don't know. I mean, it may still be that I find, it'd be interesting to see what it's like when it is just one solid colour across an entire 
side of a block. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the next step. So I think I'll get ready for that. Um, and that's going to take a little while because I, I, I know I need to, I need to be kind of scientific about this. So I need to go back and remember, I used the conditioner, I left it overnight. Then I came back the following, you know, the following day and added the stain. Then we sanded it a bit. I think when I, after the conditioner, I um, rubbed it down with alcohol. So I want to try and recreate that process as, as faithfully as I can, big, just in case, just in case I do something different, just in case it was some part of that stage. Um, so I think what I'll aim for, conditioner, um, clean it up with mineral spirits, uh, methylated spirit. And so I use the rag for the conditioner, um, rag for cleaning it up. And then I will apply, I think, two coats of stain. Should I sand it? Should I f sand it? No, I won't sand it. I just apply two coats of stain, um, get it to roughly where I think it is now, and then go for it. So they said it's, um, yeah, it's sort of, it, it's ready to go again in half an hour. So what's it been? I don't think it's been half an hour yet, but it already, I think I touched it just then, worried that I was going to be wet and it didn't. So I think, you know, it's not super cold today. It's rainy. I'm inside. It's not cold. It's not hot. Um, I reckon it's probably about sort of 23 degrees in the house. So yeah, I think this, you know, I'm going to do it inside. I'm not going to do it outside. Um, but yeah, so I need to just go through that process. So I'll probably be back. Um, I don't know. It's going to be a couple of days, I reckon, before I'm ready to um, ready to kind of do this properly. Um, yeah, I mean, on this one where there was no so yeah, the, where there was no conditioner, I don't, I can't remember. I'll have to look back at the video and see whether how aggressive I was with the brush. But that one's held. That one's held. So is it? Yeah, is it purely the conditioner? that is allowing, you know, the stain hasn't penetrated the wood properly. It's sitting on top of a conditioner that makes it look like it's in the wood and actually we're ended up shifting around. And is that the problem? Um, I mean, also have I, have where, I, where I've sanded back the conditioner, have I ended up, um, you know, mo removing the conditioner where I've sanded back the wood to, you know, because I did end up sanding both bits. So the guitar and the neck and the body back twice, I think. So did I remove enough of the conditioner? Actually, none of this is, none of this matters. It's all immaterial. Um, I don't know. I need to find out. Um, and I do not want to find, well, yeah, if I can avoid finding out on the guitar, I would rather that with the case. So that's going to be the, uh, the deal. So I think this is probably the end of this episode. Um, thankfully disaster averted rather than the creation of a disaster this time, um, which is good. So I'll take that as a positive, uh, a positive step in my, my sort of luthiery journey. Um, yeah, so in that case, I will sign off here. Um, yeah, and I will see you when I've got a block that we can try this, um, try this again on. So catch you soon.